Welcome all of you to our um, first uh, lecture in pa uh, as part of our ongoing lecture series um, targeting the topic of RDM in HPC. Today, I'm very happy to welcome um, uh, two people from the RWH University that will um, talk a bit about um, the research data management platform COSIGN and metadata management as well as giving some insight as, um, in best practices from the viewpoint of a data steward. Um, with that, I'm happy to hand over to Katja Jansen and Senior Duka from um, RWTH University. Thanks, Marcel. Thank you for the nice introduction. Okay, I hope that everyone can see my screen and can hear me nicely. Um, yeah, just a quick introduction. My name is Katja Jansen. Uh, I will start with the general information about cosine, and after this, I will hand over to my colleague Xenia. Um, yeah, I am working since roughly one year at the IT center at RWTH um, as the representative service manager of cosine, and I'm happy that I can now present some more information to you. Okay. Um, yeah, what I will talk about today, I will first give you general information, then I will give you a quick overview about the core functionalities and uh, give you an insight about new features which we implemented in Cosign during the last weeks or during the last month. Uh, then I will show you um, how you can be part of the community of Cosign and we will have some time for questions and suggestions at the end of the whole presentation of uh, me and Senia. Now let's start with the general information. So um, Cosign, as Marcel already mentioned, is a generic platform for research data management. Uh, you have a low threshold access, um, so you can log in via ORCID, uh, which will, I will explain also later in detail. And um, Cosign has a project management, so um, the access is managed um, regarding the FAIR principles, and we have a data management um, where in Cosign you can create so-called resources, um, there is the storage space provi provisioning, um, yeah, which uh, I will also explain to you later. Um, as already important for the FAIR principles, the metadata management, and um, in Cosign you have um, handle persistent identifiers, um, in short PIDs, and you also have the possibility to archive your data for 10 years after your project end. And um, there's also the possibility to access Cosign via the API and um, it is established as an open source platform. So we also have open source features. Yeah, um, we have this, uh, I think, quite nice uh, workflow graphic, which you can also find on the Cosign About page. And I will now want to explain to you um, the core functionalities and just um, yeah, showing you the whole workflow, how you can um, create this in Cosign. Starting with the login, so you have uh, two different login possibilities at the moment in Cosign. Um, the first one is that you can log in via DFN AAI, so you can use the single sign-on of the university. Um, yeah, and if your university is not already listed in the Drop down menu, then you can use the ORCID, um, which is a PID for people. So everyone can use it or create his own uh, ORCID ID. And then um, you can also, for example, invite external project partners because they can easily log in uh, to cosign via the ORCID. Uh, if you are able to use the single sign on of your university, we highly recommend that you connect um, both accounts so that you first log in with your single sign on. And then there's the possibility that you also connect your ORCID because, um, for example, if you're using your university and you are still allowed to um, have access to your data, um, then by connecting both of the accounts, you can still access the data after leaving your institute. And this is how the um, login page um, looks at the moment. So you can see also um, some of our collaboration partners and uh, yeah, AIMS especially you will also see later on. After login, you are able to create some uh, projects as well as sub projects in Cosign because um, there is an easy tree structure which is uh, followed. There is no maximum of projects and sub projects which you can create, so you can create as much as you want. And uh, then after you created the project, you can add uh, participants to the project or to the sub project. 
and there's a role management and cosign. Um, so we have three different roles, um, owner, member and guest, and um, they have different possibilities and different rights. So if you are um, added to a project as a guest, you are just able to uh, view the data and you can download the data. You are not able to change the data, you can just see it. Uh, which is very good if, for example, you have external project partners who should just have access to see the data and not be able to um, make any changes. And uh, then there's the second role, which is the member role. Um, they also have the possibility to edit the data. And um, the third role is the owner who also um, has um, administrative rights. So he can or he or she can change the project settings as well as the user management. So um, as an owner, you are able to um, add other members and also um, have the yeah, have the right to change the roles of them. One of the um, most important aspects in Cosign is the metadata. Um, so what is metadata in general? It is data to your research data. So for example, um, that you want to save who is the author who um, created the research data and which settings did you used. So um, metadata is always there to increase the reusability in line with the FAIR principles. And um, of course, there are also already some automated processes to um, save metadata. For example, that um, the microscope directly um, creates the metadata and you can directly save it um, yeah, because it's directly given to your um, um, storage. Yeah, and in Cosign, there are so-called application profiles, uh, which are individual metadata profiles. So in Cosign, you have um, metadata on the level of the projects as well as on the resources and for your research data. So for the project and for the resource creation, the metadata is enforced. So you need to put in the metadata and for your research data itself, you can um, choose one application profile per resource. And um, this is the point where you are able to decide which metadata you want to save. So um, if there is, um, so in Cosign, you can um, create the resource and then you can choose if you want to have an existing application profile or if you want to create a new one. So if you want to create a new one, you are using the platform AIMS. This is uh, the part which my colleague Xenia will present to you later. And um, as I've already mentioned before, you need uh, one application profile per resource. So that's why I um, want to show you just briefly um, which possibilities you have for this application profile. So there are um, default values, um, which means that you have a fixed value. Example uh, would be that um, the PI is always the same. So you always have the same offer and then you can just click this uh, key symbol and then uh, it will just be locked for um, this field. There's the other possibilities that uh, possibility that you have hidden fields. So for example, if fields don't just match your own data, then you can um, hide them. And uh, this is of course only possible if uh, the fields are not mandatory. And you can of course also add other fields if you just need more to describe your research data in a very good way. So what are resources um, and which possibilities do you have in Cosign to use them? So there are different possibilities. Um, we have, for example, the linked data and the GitLab resources. Um, they are possible to be used by all um, users, even if they just looked in by the ORCID, because um, the data is um, saved outside of Cosign. So for example, if you're using a linked data resource, um, you are just linking to data which is stored somewhere else. So you can also link to a video or something else which you stored on a different place. And a GitLab resource means that um, your data is saved in a GitLab repository and you just save your metadata inside of Cosign. Then there's also the um, research data storage, in short RDS, uh, where you have three different possibilities. So you have the web, the S3 and the WARM resource. Um, WARM stands for White Ones Read Many, so you just um, need to be sure that uh, once you saved your data, you're not allowed to change it. So you are not allowed and you are not able to change it. So if you put just uh, the wrong title or just the spelling mistake, then you are not able to change it. So it's for really uh, highly sensitive data. 
And um, the RDS quota is only for authorized uh, universities, which you can see on the right, um, who of them is already um, able to use it. And um, then if you are part of this authorized universities, which I will show you later on how you can uh, see if you are allowed, um, you will have default quota for RDS web and uh, for RDS S3 and RDS S1 there, you need to put an application. To make it a little bit uh, easier, I also put it in this table that you can see um, which resource you could use. For example, here you can see again that the GitLab and the linked data resource is, um, yeah, or can be used by everyone. And the RDS Web, RDS S3 and RDS WARM resources are just for RDS authorized uh, universities. Um, yeah, the quota applications are able um, via YARDS. Um, so there's also a slide later on where I show something. And um, yeah, it is required for RDS web storage, which is uh, higher than 100 gigabyte per project. And um, always for RDS S3 and RDS WARM, because when you're using these resources, um, you are able to directly uh, connect to the storage system behind Cosine and then uh, you are not enforced to put your metadata and that's why we ask some questions about your workflow as well as uh, how you want to save your metadata. Yeah, and as soon as the application is approved, uh, you can be um, or you can uh, distribute the quota to your resources because uh, you are given the quota to the project or the sub project, and then you can create as many resources as you want inside of Cosine and just distribute the storage. Yeah, um, just some more, more information, um, how you can upload files and uh, just uh, how you can save your metadata and data as well in Cosine. So you can upload files um, via the web interface. So you can just go to Cosign and use the web interface, upload your data, download your data, put the metadata inside, etc. Or you can also um, access via the API. Or if you have um, access to um, S3 storage, then you can also use S3 clients like uh, CyberDuck, for example. And um, if you are if you want to upload um, big files, then it would be better to use the S3 clients. And if you have uh, many small files, it is a better idea to put it in a zip file because then the upload will be much faster. And um, of course, we also highly recommend that you write scripts for the automated uploading because it's just easier and safer to um, yeah, save your metadata. Uh, as I've already mentioned in the beginning, we have PIDs for the unique identification and they are assigned automatically. So when you are going to your project and uh, your resource description, you can find the PIDs and um, yeah, you can just copy them. And then uh, if someone searches for the PIDs, they will come to a contact page. Yeah, I just uh, wrote it down that uh, you should Keep in mind that um, at the moment an upload uh, for files which are larger than two gigabytes um, per file via the web interface and the API is not possible because of browser limitations and limitations from the API. But uh, our developers are working as fast as possible to uh, improve it. So at the moment there's the solution that you can upload your files via the S3 clients. Um, therefore you need to do an application. And uh, we are working on uh, multi-part upload and also on improving our API. So I guess that this problem is fixed uh, very soon. Um, yeah, and then after um, your project ends, uh, there's a possibil possibility to archive your data and cosine. So um, in accordance with the good scientific practice, and um, from this time point on, your data will be in a read-only status um, of the resource uh, during this uh, archiving period and um, of course regarding the fair principles the reusability of the data as well as the metadata is increased and um, because this is an always coming up question uh, how you can access um, data for external parties or sharing your data and cosine i put it just here uh, quickly on the slide so um, cosine is not a publication service so you are not able to do direct publication and cosine. So yes, we have PIDs for projects and resources, and these are handle PIDs, but we have no uh, DOIs. So if you want to publish your data, you should contact your publication service. Um, yeah, I will give a quick outlook later on how we want to improve it in the future. And uh, if you want to 
invite external persons to projects, you have different possibilities. So um, there's the role concept, which I've already explained in the beginning that you have the owner, member and guest role. So you can, for example, invite other people um, and give them the guest role. For example, if it's just an external partner, or of course, you can also invite them as a member and owner. Um, there's the login option that you can, um, yeah, get access to Cosign via the ORCID, so very low threshold uh, login possibility. And for S3 storage, uh, of course, there's a possibility that you can uh, share the read credentials, of course, also the write credentials, even if I would not recommend it. Um, yeah, so therefore, people also can get access to the data. Now I want to give impressions what uh, are the new features and also give an outlook which would, uh, or which will come in the future. So uh, new features are that um, there was a new API uh, version implemented since end of last year. And um, now it's also possible that when you are going to your resource settings, you are able to show the name as well as the link of the used application profile. So um, yeah, with that, we just increase the reusability of the application profile, which you've chosen for the resource or which you might have um, created by yourself in the resource. Uh, there's also the possibility to um, page uh, for resources with a lot of data files. So in the beginning, it was just that um, Cosign tried to load all of the data files and then it took quite long. And now there's just this paging function, which is also there for um, listing all of the application profiles. Yeah, uh, to give you a quick outlook, um, I've mentioned in the beginning that at the moment you have two um, login possibilities, um, the ORCID as well as the um, Singer sign-on from the university. And in the future, there will also be the REC app as um, login possibility, which will be also quite easier for us um, to do the onboarding of different universities, because then you will um, be able to choose from all of the universities. And um, there will be the publication request for um, at the beginning, just for LVTR publications, but we also want to improve it and um, increase it by other publication services. So then, um, you will not do the publication directly in Cosign, but you can just um, click a button and then you will, all of the information from your resources, which you want to publish, will be directly gone to um, the publication advisory service. Yeah, I guess uh, that's one of the most important questions. Uh, how can you already use Cosign? Um, so the easiest way to find it out would be that you go to the Cosign page and see um, if your organization is um, listed in the drop down list for the login. If yes, then you can uh, have a look on the right side because then you can just log in with the uh, DFN AI. So use just the single sign on of your university. Uh, after login, I would highly recommend that you um, connect your ORCID account and then you can decide if you want to create a GitLab or linked data resources. And of course, you also have access to the RDS resources and have 100 gigabyte um, RDS web storage per project. And you can do application via the arts platform. So you can have RDS web uh, storage, which is above 100 gigabyte per project. You can also have RDS S3 storage as well as RDS warm storage. So if your organization is not in a drop down list for the login, um, you can still log in to Cosign with the ORCID. And then you can create a GitLab and link data resources because um, your data is then not saved inside of Cosign itself. Just the metadata will be saved in Cosign. Um, another possibility would be that you have, uh, for example, cooperation with uh, a university, example, the RWTH Aachen, which is um, RDS authorized, and you have a specific project with them, and then they can invite you to the project, and then um, one of the person who is from the RDS authorized university can be the PI um, to also do application via the YARDS platform, and then you have also access to storage. And the third possibility would be that you are um, from an NFDI participating research project. Example giving, uh, given would be that you are an NFDI data steward or if you know someone who is inside this project and they invite you to the project when you are a cooperation partner. Yeah, and there's another possibility how you can um, be part of the Cosign community. So we have the so-called community features. Um, there you can do some um, contributions from, so you have contributions from the Cosign community, and of course it would be also great 
if you have something which you would like to um, put there that you also um, yeah, upload it there because it's really helpful for other users if they have some best practice examples. Um, yeah, and yeah, that's uh, just that I want to say that you are highly uh, welcome to contribute and we are happy if we see more examples there. And um, examples could be that you just, um, for example, wrote a script or you made an automated uh, upload. Um, you see that uh, the direct transfer of metadata is working, etc. cetera. So um, yeah, just um, have a look on it. It's on the GitLab page and it's also linked on our documentation. Yeah, and with that, I um, already want to thank you for your attention. And um, I just put here the QR codes that you can have a look on the Cosign platform as well as uh, the Cosign documentation. Um, we are always happy to get uh, improvement suggestions, uh, what you want to have on the documentation. And uh, we also have a Cosign mailing list. So uh, once per month, there is a newsletter uh, which is coming there. And um, yeah, with that, I directly would give the word to Xenia and then she can continue. And after this, I guess there's a lot of time for questions. Okay, thank you, Katja. I will share my screen now. Hello, everybody. I'm the, um, I'm Xenia Dukat and I'm the data steward from IT Center. I'm working here already uh, one year and one week exactly. And um, yeah, I'm the data steward for the TRR219 mechanism of cardiovascular complications in chronic kidney disease. And I'm also work um, for the second level support for the cosine and other tickets. Uh, so I will be also uh, happy to tell you about our cosine. Uh, so at first I wanted to show you how it looks like in Cosign. So we have all this project. For example, today I will work with a test project. And here we have some resources. As Katja says, we have um, in each project, uh, you, uh, in each resource, you can have one application profile. And for example, here LC stands for liquid chromatography. It's a specific technique from mass spectrometry. And in collaboration with researchers, we decided this, uh, this um, specific technique needs this metadata. So the first step, uh, to work with Cosign is to think about what metadata would you like to have for your application profile, like um, which metadata fields maybe you would like to have some controlled vocabularies that you can use in your application profiles. Maybe you know that um, you're working with some microscope and it gives you uh, all the time the same metadata. So this kind of things would be nice to have in your application profiles. And uh, just to, to show you the difference, for example, this is mass spectrometry, but this is liquid chromatography application profile, but we also have multi imaging that's actually also a technique from mass spectrometry. But the, but the application profile is totally different because it's a different instrument, it gives you different kind of metadata, so it's really nice especially if you're automating your metadata processing, upload into the callsign. It's very nice to create this application profile that um, 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 like um, have all the necessary metadata fields and uh, you can directly um, automatize this process of uploading metadata. And now I will show you how exactly you're creating this um, application profiles. So the best way would be to go from the uh, resources in Cosign. I will change it to English. And as Katja says, we have different resource types, so GitLab, link data, and so on. And for example, I will choose today link data resource type because it doesn't um, have any quota, so I can directly go to the second step, application profile. And here also two possibilities to choose from already existing in Cosign application profiles or create your own. So it's also could be a nice possibility. Maybe you're working with something that already was created and maybe the application profile will be suitable for you. So you can also think of it. But if not, you can click here to create a new application profile, confirm on the pop-up. And here we are in the AIMS generator. 
Uh, so first of all, I will tell you how uh, the interface uh, what do we have here in the interface and then we will to get, uh, I will show you how to create an application profile and what happens after you submit an application profile. It's also a very important step. Uh, so, uh, interface. Actually, we have here uh, four columns. Uh, first would be available application profiles. Uh, here you will find an overview of all application profiles publicly available in Cosign. The text field at the top allows you to filter the listed application profiles by name. Also, you can choose it from this list. And uh, you can see the metadata fields for each application profile here in the detail view. You can see their properties and so on. So that's how you work with it. Vocabulary terms. So, uh, in this section, you have two options. You can uh, search for existing vocabulary terms that already was added to another application profiles, or you can add your custom term. So, uh, this custom term would be your metadata field. And for now, I'm suggesting always adding new custom terms. Only if you're 100% sure that you know uh, ontology terms that's really um, good for your metadata, then you can add term from some of the ontologies, but if not, you can just click this button to create a new metadata fields to your profile. Um, we have here detail view. This section lists all the fields of the currently selected application profile. If you have already added fields to your profile, you can edit them here in the field properties column and individual fields can be removed by clicking on this red cross. Now it's grayed out because we are in the view mode. And on the top center we have here three buttons. Uh, editor, graph and metadata. So clicking on these buttons allow you to switch between the editor view, graphical rendering of the dependencies and uh, the preview of the final application profile. So this basically helps you to check the functionality and correctness of your progress so far. So it's actually a very important step to do to check if you, uh, everything works at you as you intended it to work. And also here in the editor view, we have here two symbols. One would be the gear for the metadata for the application profile. So we have metadata in each step of the cosine and this is metadata for the application profile. Yeah, so uh, please provide uh, descriptions of the application profile that you're creating. Maybe it would be useful for some other users of the cosine, title, name of the creator and so on. And another symbol is the code view. You can switch uh, here between actual RDF format, which is it, and more user-friendly representation. Additionally, you can also switch between different representations of these formats, like it could be n triplets, JSON, Turtle, and so on. Uh, but it is advisable, though, to make all changes through the graphical interface and not directly in the code. And uh, uh, first column would be the field properties. So these are the properties for each separate metadata field that you're creating. And I think it would be uh, better when we discuss it while creating the application profile so I can show you how, it, how each of these properties uh, will work. Another very important button here would be this enter token button. So, <clears throat> Via this button, you can specify the personal cosign user token, which allows you to publish your, public, uh, your application profile directly. <clears throat> Without a token, you can only store the application profiles locally. But if you have been brought to the AIMS generator via cosign, as we did, because we was in cosign, we were in cosign, and just then we are redirected. You can ignore this function because you already actually have your token here. You can check it by this link. So we already have token in, in our system. If you don't have it, you can just click here. It opens again the cosign, and here in access token menu, you can create a new token for the aims, for aims. So uh, this is basically the interface of the aims and uh, now we can discuss what options do we have for creating the application profiles. 
the most straightforward and easy options will be just to create an application profile. You just have an empty profile and you add in new metadata from metadata fields to it. Uh, second option is to import. So maybe you already created the, one, the application profile and you have total file on your local machine so you can import it. And there are three possibilities with edit menu. So you can copy, extend or create a new version of already existing application profiles. Uh, copy and new version both give you a possibility to add new metadata fields to the profile and change already existing metadata fields. But extend option <coughs> is just extending the profile, so you can't change original profile, you can just add new metadata fields. I think for today we will try to extend profile because it's a little bit more complicated and then when you will try to create something new, it would be easy to you to get along with this image generator. So, if you want to create an application profile, first of all, and extend option, we need to check, uh, check what uh, application profile we would like to extend. I will choose this base profile because it's just base and we can add some new metadata fields to it. Click extend, continue on the pop-up and uh, now we have again metadata for the application profile. So here I need to write something, I just name it extend text, test, but please while creating the, uh, the application profile provide meaningful name and meaningful description to it. Now we can click continue and as you can see this is our application profile that we are currently working with. And in detail view, we have this uh, show relationships button. So it basically shows us that <clears throat> we have an empty profile because we don't have any metadata fields to it. And we have inherited application profile with metadata fields. As I said, we can't uh, change these fields. We can do it in another option, for example, in copy option. So uh, what do we actually have here? in field properties. First of all, of course, the name of the uh, metadata fields. Second would be uh, minimum required entries. This property indicates whether the fields uh, is mandatory or not. If you want it to be mandatory, you need to put one here. And if you leave it blank, it means the value is not required. And you can always check it in metadata form. So this uh, field is mandatory, this red asterisk shows us. Then we have maximum possible values. This specify a maximum uh, number of values and leaving this um, entry blank means unlimited number of values uh, can be um, made. So for example, I would like to create my uh, first uh, metadata field. It would be, for example, um, uh, Robin ID. And uh, I will specify that we have just three maximum possible entries. For this, in metadata form, we can see it appeared here. And if I add just some entries, I can do just three of them. So now the plus is grayed out. Um, so this is one thing to uh, do with your metadata fields. Also, as I showed you in cosine, we can create lists. For example, uh, I will create now a metadata field with list. It could be um, software, data analysis software. And for this, I need to show a property type change property type, it would be property type list. And I can add several entries here. It could be SPSS, MATLAB, or maybe R. Uh, and now you can see in metadata form that uh, there is a metadata field software where you can choose from this option that I already created. So this is very straightforward, it's a list. 
but we have very similar options here in AIMS and it calls class. So, for example, if I click on the subject area, it looks also like a list, but from like editor view, you can see that this field is actually a class and it has a link. So, this link is actually a link to the vocabulary that have been already created in the cosine and you can access it uh, through this link, this class. Uh, so, what is the main difference between these two types, links, uh, classes and uh, lists? I suggest using classing, classes when dealing with a pre-established list of positions, such as, uh, for example, all existing languages. It could be uh, possible instruments for your research, or for example, PIs in your consortium. So, classes would be ideal for something universal, an entity that you or others also might use in different application profiles. Or if you just have an extensive list, like for example, all existing languages, it was a big list and we created it as a class because it's just uh, physically impossible to add all the entries for all the languages here from the aims. So, I would say classes, you need uh, to work a little bit on it because you need to contact us in a, uh, via ticket and um, mention what uh, list would you like to create, but it could be a very useful feature because then we'll just send you back this link uh, to the class and you can use it in other application profiles or maybe just give it to somebody else who needs the same metadata field for his application profile. And if not, if it's just very simple and easy list to create, you can just create it from AIMS generator via list property type. And um, the next uh, property type that I would like to mention would be the node. So I get again a custom term here. I will name it, for example, software details. So, I already had some software, but I would like to add uh, um, some details about it, some maybe um, uh, information what exactly I, I used and how. For this, we have this feature. Previously, it was just called node. Now, it calls satisfied profile always node but it's the same and you can actually choose from all already existing in cosine um, application profiles. So, you can refer to another application profile through this feature and I already know that we have in cosine software application profile. This is it. And if I click on it, it also appeared in inherited application profiles. If I click on it, I see all the metadata fields that, for example, would be useful for me. So, how we are using this feature? On the preview, I can show you that we have software details. It's one metadata field and it's empty. And if we click plus here, you can see all the metadata fields from another application profile. So, that's how it works. Um, Another a very important detail about creating application profiles, especially about using this custom term button, that uh, it would be very nice to put some descriptions uh, what metadata field, uh, about metadata field. So, it should be one sentence or maybe even a half a sentence, but please provide some information that we know what exactly uh, you are referring to in this, uh, via this metadata field. Um, so, this is basically all metadata uh, field properties and all the main features that we have in AIMS generator that would be good to use and good to know. So, these are the main ones and one from administrative properties, the description. And the last procedure that I want to, to show you would be to uh, submit an application profile when it's uh, ready. So, um, for this you need the save button. Uh, you have three options here. You can download code just to be safe on your local machine. Uh, download code is import with imports basically um, gives you also code of the inherited application profiles, not just the link of this, but their code. 
and the third one is submission. So when you click on the submit button, you get again metadata for the application profile. You can check if everything's right. And uh, if uh, the metadata is right, if you checked on the preview mode that everything is working as you intended, everything is fine, you can click submit and then you will get, actually, um, I will show you this uh, email that you submitted an application profile and you have here a link to the merge request. It's also a very important step because I, um, I suggest you open this link, you go to the git and uh, here you can leave us a message. I already wrote something like, Dear Cosign Team, I am the creator. Or you can even write, I saw the possibility to write, um, uh, what, how exactly you will use uh, your application profile, what metadata you have for the, each of the fields. It would be in a perfect, uh, uh, perfect condition, but just uh, to mention that you are here and you're ready to communicate, because sometimes we have questions about the application profiles and uh, then we have direct contact with you. So, very important to note. And, um, that's basically all I would like to tell you today about creating application profiles in the cosine.